The American Brahmin influence in the beef industry is felt worldwide, and their genetics are sought by cattlemen in every continent. The Indian cattle that were the foundation of the American Brahmin breed were first imported into the United States in the 1850s. As the breed developed, the American Brahmin Breeders Association was organized in 1924. The first secretary was J.W. Sartwell of Houston, Texas. It was he who proposed the word Brahmin to the industry, and so it became the new name for the beef breed. Today, the American Brahmin breed has achieved acceptance for their environmental adaptation, longevity, mothering ability, and efficient beef production. The Brahmin breed is probably the most versatile beef breed of cattle there is in the world. Uh, if we think about circling the globe at 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south and where that band of land, where the, how much land that encompasses, just within the northern and southern hemisphere, we take an area that's, uh, that's, uh, that's almost to Dallas and go almost the entire country of Brazil. All that land mass fits between those, and that's where Brahmin cattle can exist. You can go across the Atlantic Ocean and you think about Africa, it takes almost the entire continent of Africa and part of Southern Europe, all of India, and probably two-thirds of Australia. That's where Brahmin cattle fit. So, not just in the United States, but around the entire world. If you look at their attributes, their physical attributes, or genetic attributes, when we look at cattle that are adapted to uh, uh, hot, humid-type climates, cattle that uh, have uh, longevity, cattle that are uniquely adapted to have some resistance to diseases and and tolerance to parasites, ability to uh, digest and uh, utilize uh, a little bit coarser forages and roughages, their ability to, to store some minerals. And because of longevity and their ability to live in uh, uh, undesirable tropical, subtropical type environments, uh, they're uniquely adapted, particularly on the maternal side uh, for that uh, as a cow breed. It's because of this that these cattle came to have the ability to survive and thrive where other breeds have failed. In their expansion, American Brahmin cattle have improved beef production in every country they have been introduced. They had in those early days great difficulty with the European and British cattle coming in here and being able to survive and reproduce and be efficient in this country and they were constantly looking for some cattle to infuse into the herd here that would make the cattle more efficient and live better in this country and be more economical. The primary purpose in life in today's cattle business is to add heterosis through crossbreeding and heat tolerance. American Brahmin cattle are utilized extensively in the U.S. beef industry due to their convenience traits of heterosis, which equates to increased growth, environmental adaptability, insect resistance, efficiencies, longevity, and carcass quality. If you think about where Brahmin cattle come from, the environment that they're adapted to is purebreds, and then we have whatever breed you choose to have as the other half of the F1, and the environments that they're adapted to. Now we have genes from both of those different breed types that within our own respective breeds were adapted to two different environments. That allows that F1 individual, that hybrid, to be adapted to a wide range of environments. And I think to me that's one of the best, the, the most important things about thinking about the crossbreeding and thinking about F1 cows is that if the breeds are chosen right to make that F1, sure we get increases in productivity and, term, and fertility and longevity and milk production, but the most important thing is we get increases in overall adaptability and that's the foundation for all those other things. Cows that, cow that is not adapted to her environment will not give you extra milk production, will not give you extra fertility, will not give you extra growth, and won't live a day longer unless she's already adapted. We run a cow-calf operation here in Central Florida, and we use uh, three breeds of, of bulls, Angus, Charlays, and the Brahmas. 
We use these three, brood, three breeds of bulls on, on crosses with the Charlets being the terminal cross using the Brahmin influence to get the superior female replacements. The Brahmin are one of the few breeds that will um, sweat. They're tolerant of the insects, of the heat. Um, the cattle that were, you know, they're adaptable to, to our subtropic climate that we have. You know, and here in Florida, we have approximately 50 some odd inches of rainfall. Uh, it can get muddy and it gets hot, and, and they're the best uh, acclimated. We have to have some Brahmin influence in these cattle to make them perform here in Central Florida. Although Brahmin genetics are utilized in all facets of beef production, the F1 Brahmin female, or commonly referred to as the queen of cow country, is known for their increased milk production, high fertility levels, and easy calving abilities. These are just a few characteristics that Brahmin F1 females are known for and show superiority over any other female in the nation's cow herd. The F1 female has proven that, uh, that she is superior to everything else because she is, the, the, in the cattle world, the, in the strictest sense, the most divergent uh, of, of the Vos Indicus and the, uh, and the, and the English or Vos Taurus, uh, that we do get maximum hybrid vigor. She, uh, and everything that goes along with it in the production traits from longevity to growth, the growth factors, the milk factors, uh, etc. Uh, and when you put them all together, there's nothing out there that can equal it. The Brammer is, a, as we all know in Florida, is well suited for Florida. You've got to have her. She's a, she's a cow that does well on the forage we got. She's a, she's a survivor. She's a go-getter. She, uh, she, she's not waiting on the feed bucket. And without it, that's what you need here. Brahmin females crossed with nearly any other breed have value, and have a lot of value. To ensure these traits, the American Brahmin Breeders Association created the F1 certification program to verify the purity and parentage of the F1 female as this benefits both the breeder and user. The ABBA F1 certification program is without question the leading commercial female program in the United States. Through this producer-friendly program, either a certificate or an ear tag is issued verifying the parentage of the golden certified or certified female. This further uh, ensures to the producer that maximum heterosis is received and ultimately more value is given to either the producer or the end user of these females. The ABBA program was started some 30 years ago uh, as a way to identify and legitimize uh, what we've been doing for the last 50 years on this Texas and Louisiana and southeast coast and that is putting Brahmin genetics together with uh, uh, English genetics. Uh, there has been a little analytical work done uh, in the early days, maybe 15 years ago, that our uh, certified and golden certified cattle brought X dollars in a particular sale over a 20 year period and it was significant. It was like $125. By implementing the certification program, it means more money in the producer's pocket and presents more opportunities like strengthening the value and quality of breeding programs, both registered and commercial. Along with their survival skills, the American Brahmin's physical characteristics are obvious. From their large hump over the top of the shoulder to their generally long oversized ears. Though a majority of the breed is light to medium gray or red, their color trait can vary from light gray, red, to even almost black. Brahmins are not only recognized by their distinct physical characteristics, but also their intelligence and desired disposition. The Brahmin cattle are different, but our cattle are probably some of the most gentle cattle in the world. They're gregarious, they stay together. If we drive those cattle, if we can control where the leader goes and, and uh, get that front cow to go where she needs to go, the rest of the cattle will generally follow her with all other things being the same. So Brahmin cattle are tremendously easy to work. We just have to understand them and how they think. As consumers shift to lean meat and lower calorie diets, 
American Brahmins are perfectly positioned to fill the demand for a beef product that efficiently converts feed into high-quality, tender beef while producing a carcass free of excess fat. If you're feeding those cattle, whether you're feeding them to sell them live, uh, feed them to sell them in the beef, or feed them to sell them on so some sort of grade and yield equation. Uh, one of the first things, you have cattle that don't get sick as much, and cattle that don't get sick don't die. On top of that, they'll have better feed conversion, they'll have higher average daily gain. We get along really good with, uh, with half Brahmin cattle uh, here in the Texas Panhandle, especially cattle like these that are F1, true F1 steers. Um, they'll grow, grow plenty of hair and um, they can handle the winter very well. Performance of the steers has been really good to this point. Uh, we check weighed the cattle in November. They were gaining over four pounds a day and the cattle weren't thin when they came in. Uh, so cattle are really performing well. We've been very pleased with how they performed. Their consumption has been good. Um, I think the cattle will end up closing out gaining over three pounds a day in the in mid three and a half to three seven a day is what I would expect. That would um, be above average um, from the other cattle we feed. Um, we get a lot of calves right from the ranch. Um, these steers would perform as well as, as any cattle that we that we feed. Uh, from a, a yield grade standpoint, they're going to perform very well. Uh, I would expect these steers to be over 70% yield grade ones and twos, very few yield grade fours. Um, we'll also have a, a really uh, good dressing percentage uh, with the thin hide on these cattle. I would think we would, these cattle would dress anywhere from 64 and a half, 65 percent. And when you put all that back together, um, selling these cattle on a grid, I expect these cattle to bring back a premium on the grid, especially with the choice select spread being between three and five dollars like we've experienced the last year. I think the hybrid vigor of the true F1 Brahmin uh, certainly helps uh, with in cattle feeding uh, as well as uh, what we're trying to get done on the female side when we're raising true F1 females. When you put those cattle in the feed yard, we don't see any real difference in terms of feed yard performance, efficiency, or sickness compared to any other cross. And in fact, most of the time, those F1 cattle are superior to straight breads and superior to F1 cattle that do not have Brahmin influence in them in terms of carcass performance, in terms of reduction in mort mortality or death loss, reduction in morbidity or sickness rates, and feed efficiency. The uh, ABBA has started a carcass evaluation program about 10 years ago. And one of the things that, that they do in terms of not only uh, putting a value on these cattle, going in and feeding these cattle, and then harvesting these cattle and collecting all the carcass data all the, for, cutabil for cutability and for quality grade, uh, they also take a stake out of these cattle for, for tenderness analysis. And here recently we just got back some data uh, from a lot of those same breeders that have been in this program this entire time. And uh, the average shear force is underneath eight pounds. Okay, and previous to that, it had been closer to 10. And so they've made a lot of progress in, in tenderness. A Brahmin carcass will run with anybody's carcass. Tenderness, uh, palatability, grade, yield, they work perfectly well. With strict selection, guided by the standard of excellence of the founding breeders, the American Brahmin has been recognized for its exceptional hardiness, physical stamina, an ability to profitably produce on marginal lands. It has enabled us to breed cattle that can adapt, produce, and uh, live well in harsh environments in tropical regions. The ABBA has made a continued effort to ensure the American Brahmin breeds place as a viable entity in the global beef market. Uh, we have an outstanding international marketing effort uh, they're through the association, through our uh, international committee, uh, and in fact we probably export the most cattle of any beef breed in the United States. The lands that are available around the world where there's a lot of pasture land, a lot of uh, people that are available to work with them, 
and to produce protein in the most economical manner are going to be produced using Brahmins or Brahmin crosses. So the future for our breed is extremely bright. If you want to produce uh, beef and milk in uh, tropical, subtropical conditions, uh, I think that the common denominator for registered cattle or commercial cattle will be the Brahmin breed. We've been selling cattle internationally from our organization since the early 1930s. Since that time, we've sent cattle to 43 different countries of the world. And so the Brahmin is in great demand worldwide. It's a good for Vietnam, and I want to do it. And the people in Vietnam want to bring uh, American Brahmin to Vietnam to raise them. And we want to exchange trade between two nations. The American Brahmin Breeders Association is a long-standing member-run organization. The primary responsibility and original purpose of the association is to record the parentage and ownership of Brahmin cattle. However, over the years, the organization has grown and developed a number of programs to better improve and promote the breed and its members. The American Brahmin Breeders Association has been in existence since 1924. Not only do we have a strong history, but we also have a large number of dedicated individuals that are part of this breed and help carry on it to see that it's going to uh, prosper into the future. Oh, we put information out about the breed that we hope will be helpful to all of our, our breeders, old breeders, new breeders, and uh, anyone that has an interest in, in the Brahmin breed. Well, I think the association is made up of some great cattle and some great people. Uh, who, who have loved and have a lot of passion for these animals, and they, they have uh, bred them to be very efficient beef-producing uh, animals. Along with the ABBA, the American Junior Brahmin Association is growing rapidly and soaring to new heights. From the prestigious All-American National Junior Brahmin Show to the numerous scholarships that are available, the AJBA allows youngsters to be a part of the bigger picture of educating its future breeders and promoting the American Brahmin. We have a tremendous junior program, probably one of the best ones in the United States, where we offer over $50,000 in premiums and scholarships each year. It is one of the best youth organizations in the United States. We've got over 600 members, coast to coast. Um, our members come from 18 states, mostly in the South, but we actually have members all over the nation. Um, growing up through the association, I gained a love for cattle and just a love for all of agriculture in general. And it's kind of developed me to what I want to do for the rest of my life and going to embryology. I'm actually going to school now on a livestock judging scholarship. And the things I learned about livestock judging were at the All-American through different contests and selecting cattle to bring to the All-American. It has shown me what it takes to get the job done and it's prepared me for being on my own and getting out there and I know that I can make executive decisions that are going to better prepare me um, to, in college and also in the world, in the job market. It's opened up my opportunities. I know so many people and um, it'll help me later on in life to just be a better speaker and a better person. To learn more about the American Brahmin Breeders Association, and to be a part of the growing success of the American Brahmin breed, visit Brahmin.org.